Okay, so Ireland were playing Scotland uh, in Paris. Uh, lots of different permutations of this game of who would qualify for the next phase, the knockout stages of the World Cup. Ireland could have missed out, South Africa could have missed out, and Scotland could have missed out. In the end, Scotland did not get the required result to see them through to the to knockout stages. They've missed out. The Irish defence has built the platform for the win. The Irish attack ripped the Scottish defence on the right-hand side to pieces in this game. It was 26-0 at half-time to Ireland. It's finished 36-14 to Ireland. Second half, Scotland showed a bit of fight. They had two quick-fire tries midway through uh, the, the second half. Sort of similar to that insane game against England a few years back where it, it ended up, I think, a 38-all draw. You're thinking... OK, there's been some changes, Sexton's gone off, you know, there's been a few changes with rejigging of the back line because of injury, you know, forward pack changes, so the replacements are coming on, and the game has lost a little bit of direction, Ireland are being a bit less potent in attack, uh, the game, as I say, is drifting a little bit, and Scotland just ha fire in two quick fire tries, and you're thinking, hang on a second, we, we may have, you know, a repeat of what happened uh, for Scotland against England all those years ago. Uh, well, not that, actually not that long ago, but a few years back, which was the most ridiculous game I've ever seen. Wasn't to be. They left their fight a little bit too late. There was a yellow card for a trip. There was a massive set of handbags. Um, but there was a yellow card. Ireland take advantage of that yellow card. But the scoring starts very, very quickly. And there's a couple of tries that are almost carbon copies, quite quite frankly, with, with how they're scored. Uh, Lowe's trying them after just a minute of play. The interplay uh, between the, the outside backs, uh, Aki, Ringrose, obviously Lowe gets on the end of this one after just a minute, tells you how Ireland are going to attack. They clearly identified a defensive weakness with Scotland on Scotland's right edge. They've exploited it. And um, they, they very, very quickly take a lead. Now, Sexton misses the the conversion a few kicks were missed tonight but it hasn't proven crucial in the end and then it's all Scotland for the next 20 odd minutes where they literally are besieging the Irish line and it's the Irish defence that builds the platform for the attack later on in the first half and at the beginning of the second half to run riot there's about 20 minutes of solid back you know solid defence Scotland have a lot of phases a lot of possession a lot of territory can't score and then Keenan's first try on 26 minutes is a carbon copy of Lowe's try after a minute. It, again, similar channels, outside backs, Aki, Ring Rose. They, they've targeted how they're going to attack down their left. Uh, uh, Keenan comes in from fullback, and it's, it is a carbon copy of the first try. Uh, this time Sexton converts. And then, yeah, the momentum's now swung. Ireland, uh, uh, well, they've had less ball. They're, they're, they're now on top. They're winning the collision. They've won the defensive battle. They're now winning the collision in attack. Uh, Henderson scores his try in 32 minutes. Sexton converts that. Now Keenan gets his second try and the bonus point try right on the stroke of half time. Pretty much for 39 minutes. And again, and again it's multi-phase, quick ball, multi-phase play. Uh, and except this time it's going on Ireland's right rather than their left. And it's the Scottish left-hand side defence that's starting to struggle. But the first three tries technically come down Scotland's right-hand side. So defensive combinations and trusting your inside and your outside man and numbering up. Ireland have had that, that period of about, you know, uh, 24 minutes um, of, well, just fun, really. They, they've completely run riot. And, you know, Scotland just haven't figured out how to breach the Irish defence and how to stop them scoring. The, the, the issues of previous Scotland sides under Gregor Townsend, where they're great in multi-phase play and keeping the ball alive, no end product and poor defence have come home to roost after they seem to have fixed them. They seem to have fixed them. They, they, they look very confident with multi-phase play. But it's when they're coming up against a well-organised defence um, that can slow the breakdown a little bit and, 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 and work as in units of three or four, shifting uh, on either side of the ruck or the mall. Scotland, when Gregor Townsend first took over, were very comfortable with multi-phase play, but very leaky defensively, and sometimes they lacked that little bit of punch breaking through an organised defence. So it's half-time. Now... It's 26-0, and Ireland have pretty much got the game won. Um, nothing certain in, the, in, in any sport. Uh, we've seen comebacks bigger than that. 
but it, it, they're, they're comfortable. So they're comfortable. Then there's the Ollie Smith yellow. Now, obviously, Darcy Graham can't keep the ball in. The whistle hasn't quite been blown, so Sexton just hacks it on ahead to, to continue a phase of play, and Ollie Smith tries to trip him over. It then leads to a, a little shove from Sexton, and then all the players charge in. I'm surprised Ollie Smith was the only one uh, to, to get Sinbin. We saw uh, in in the, the uh, previous game, uh, in the Wales-Georgia game, where a similar incident happened and, and two players involved in a similar incident were both Sinbin. Only one player gets Sinbin here. So then, then you've got to look at that consistency from incident to, to incident. And we've seen in three successive games these comings together. In this case, Ollie Smith, tripping is just a, a cheap shot. It's it's a cheap it's a cheap you know, infringement, it's lazy, it's petulant, it deserves a yellow. We all know that. It's not, is it the worst trip? No. But the coming together of players, as I say in the Wales-Georgia game, two players were simbin for a similar incident. Uh, in the england Samoa game, similar incident happens. Uh, no simbinnings. So there's a lack of consistency in this area about a player discipline in regards to reactions to challenges and, and reactions to comments or, or just, you know, tensions and, and uh, emotions boiling over in this sense. So, consistency. But, Ireland take advantage with Sheehan's try. That cross, you know, he stays on the wing. He's a hooker. Stays on the wing. Holds his whip. They're bashing up the middle. They've, they've now taken advantage of the extra player. And, he's, and Sheehan's quite a, a mobile front row forward. Gets his try in 44 minutes. Uh, ring Rose try. Um, he's had a brilliant game. Fantastic game. And uh, crossfield kick is fantastic as well. So that's on 58 minutes. And you're thinking Ireland could completely, you know, rip Scotland to pieces. Then there's that little fight back. And you're thinking back in time to that England-Scotland game a few years back where it was ridiculous. Now Ashman gets his try on 64 minutes. That's converted in Ali Price, who's worked tirelessly today on 65 minutes. Gets his try. Russell converts both tries. And you're thinking, potentially, Ireland's game management's gone wandering a little bit. The intensity's dropped out of the game a little bit. And uh, Scotland has started to make progress in the, in, 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 in the physical, in the contact area, in defence, in attack. They're starting to, to bash into the Ireland line and, and gain that extra foot in contact, the extra foot and a half in contact. And they're starting to get a bit of dominance in that area. And there's a slight momentum swing. It's not, it's not to last because Scotland's discipline and accuracy was not good enough. Um, there's been some injuries. Both sides finished with two scrum halves each on the field. So three out of the four starting wingers have gone off injured. Uh, so that could be a concern for Ireland going forward that they've lost both starting wingers in Mack and Lowe. Uh, both have gone off injured. Although Lowe played on in the first half with an eye injury. He's gone off at half time. Mac, um, Mac Hansen. Uh, went off for an HIA, came back on, didn't look feel right. He signalled to the, the, the physio, I'm not feeling 100%. Slight head knock. He's decided on his own volition to go, I'm not feeling 100%. Fair play to the player. Um, so we've got two scrum halves on for Scotland and two scrum halves on uh, for Ireland. And um, the, the replacement scrum half gone on the wing. Um, so you've got, you know, four scrum halves on the field. The referee's probably having nightmares. Now, the, the Beanlam try being disallowed for a knock-on, I didn't see the knock-on in on replay, but they, they could have finished off with, with a, 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 a score right at the end. They rest rest back some momentum. They kill off the, the, the Scotland fight back, which was came too late. But Scotland, uh, Scotland struggled against Ireland's defensive structures, and Ireland's defence built the platform to win the game. Uh, there's a reason why Ireland are the number one what, number one team in the world, ranking-wise. They now face the All Blacks, and that's a replay of the quarterfinal four years ago. Except Ireland in recent years have become a bit of a, a banana skin uh, for uh, the All Blacks in recent times. Uh, and they, the head-to-head -head in, in the last you know, five, ten years is actually a lot closer uh, when it comes to wins for and against. Um, Ireland have proven themselves able to not only beat the All Blacks, but, but beat them well. And this All Black side, their discipline and, and their structures have been questioned at times. Um, they lost on opening night. First ever time they lost a full stage game. 
and that will be a tasty encounter in the quarterfinals. I think the winner of that game could go on to, to win the World Cup. Scotland out at the pool stage yet again. I, wouldn't, I don't think Scotland have embarrassed themselves in the pool stage, but they will look back at that South Africa game and they'll look back at this game and go what might have been. Um, they have struggled against much better organised defences and there's a reason why South Africa are the second best team in the world and they've got a lot of injuries and they've had to rejig their squad so they're not actually the strongest Springbok side that could be placed on the field and the strongest Springbok squad they, they could have selected that is what's scary uh, and Scotland have struggled against those slightly better nations even though they're the fifth ranked side in the world they're going home so there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, Ireland 36-14. Uh, Keenan scored two tries, including a bonus point try. And the Scotland five back came too little too late after the game was gone. So while they showed glimpses in the second half, not enough. They had more ball, more possession, and just could not breach a well-organised, well-drilled Ireland defence. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts in the comments section below, and I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.